What's going on guys? Scar coming at you with another Magic the Gathering video. In today's video, we're going to be switching it up a little bit. I'm going to take a small little break on posting some budget decks. And we're going to move into a little bit of a deck that I kind of seen on Magic.gg, which is a website that they post these decks of Magic the Gathering that have won six games in a row uh, from Platinum to Mythic. So I thought I'd do one of these videos again and post a deck that I found kind of interesting, which is a Jund mid-range deck. Essentially what this deck does is plays a bunch of spells to kind of get into that mid game and just plays high impact spells in the mid game. Uh, there's not many creatures in the deck. Uh, I would say it's kind of more on the end game, maybe around the more control side, but we are more of a mid range deck overall. The goal here is to play a bunch of planeswalkers that have very devastating abilities if our opponent can't deal with them and then essentially control the game in that way. Uh, with that being said, guys, if you like the video, hit that like button. It definitely helps out a lot. If you're new here, want to know post new videos on the channel, hit that subscribe button. But let's dive into the deck and let's talk about it. All right, so here is the deck overall as a whole. You would say it's a very interesting deck. I'll actually have a link for it down in the description below, either to the magic.gg website where you can actually see other decks uh, that, you know, have done very, fairly well in standard overall in Mythic and uh, Platinum. Uh, but this deck is interesting to me just because I feel like it plays a very interesting base of cards. I did make some adjustments because those decks are best of three, and I added some cards I think are fairly good with the current standard meta as a whole. Um, with that being said, I mean, the deck is pretty solid from top to bottom. I mean, sure, we don't really have a turn one play, but, you know, we get kind of beefy. We try our best to ramp up to get to our later game. Um, and we play three color lands of, you know, Jund, essentially. Uh, with that being said, let's start off in the bottom of the deck. We are starting off with Heartless Act, two mana, uh, you know, destroy target creature. We all know about this card. It's either you play this, you play Eliminate, or you play Poison in the Cup, which is a new one. Blood Chief's Thirst is another one that's a possibility. You can kind of rotate this out depending on what you really like and, uh, and what you feel. But Heartless Act, I think, is the go-to just because it's just fairly solid as long as your opponent's not playing any sorts of creatures. Next card up is we have Valky, God of Lies. So essentially what Valky is, he's a new card from Kyle Time. If you don't know what he does, uh, you can play either for the creature or in the late game play him as the Tibalt Planeswalker, which both are very high and impactful. The, the creature, though, comes into play for two mana. It's a 2-1. Uh, enters the battle if each opponent reveals their hand for each opponent. Exiles a creature card they reveal this way until it leaves the battlefield. So essentially, we get to take a card from their hand, put it, put it underneath Valky, and exile it, as long as it's a creature, of course. And then we can tap X, choose a creature card with Exile with Valky with Converted May Cost X. Valky becomes a copy of that card. So essentially Valky now becomes whatever creature you may have exiled underneath him uh, until I guess he leaves the battlefield, which is pretty cool. Uh, it's definitely something that you can take advantage of. Let's just say you play him on turn two. You know, you're going to play a land on turn three, you maybe take their three drop, which is definitely very good. And then play it against them, which is definitely very annoying. Uh, and then on the, the back side, you can play him as Tibble in the late game when you have seven mana. And this is where actually, this is one of those interesting things. I actually really like Tibble when I have played him in my couple test playthroughs before I actually start making the video. And I like the idea that when he comes into the battlefield, you immediately get the emblem that he has. And essentially is uh, cards exiled by Tibble. Uh, you can play them um, as and spend mana as those mana of any color to play them. So it's definitely cool in that sense. You can plus two and exile top card of each player's library, including yourself. So you can take each player's top card, put in your exile. You can play those cards, lands and whatnot. You can minus three, you can exile target artifact or creature. So if your opponent has an pesky artifact or creature on the battlefield, just exile it. And then minus eight, if you get here, you can exile all cards from all graveyards and add three red mana. So if you've just been plus two the whole time, there is a small chance that you could probably, you know, just take your opponent's things and then be able to play them against them completely and have all these cards uh, from yours and your opponent's graveyard, especially in the by turn seven, turn eight, even that late game, there's gonna be cards in the graveyard that are definitely gonna be super effective to use against your own opponent. Then moving to the three drop slot, we play two Elspeth's Nightmare, just on the basis of just playing a balance of, you know, various uh, creature destruction when it comes to target creatures. Uh, this is for that pesky aggro deck, you know, the second chapter of the saga is you have to look at our opponent's hand, choose an online card from it, they, that player discards that card. And that third chapter is we get to exile opponent's graveyard. So I would say this is kind of one of those things that kind of Depending on how you feel what your opponent's doing, if they're playing a lot of things from their graveyard, this is something you may want to play to, you know, combat your opponent from, you know, recurring things from the graveyard, especially if they play things like Luris, which is one of those things that's pesky and kind of likes to rotate things in and out of the graveyard. Uh, overall, though, I know this is something you don't really want to play with Valky, especially the Tibalt side, just because, you know, you want those cards from the graveyard, but it is one of those things. So uh, I think it's one of those things that maybe a two of, maybe this is where you play a different spot removal, like Poison the Cup. I don't really know. It's one of those things, I guess it depends on what you really feel like you should do. Uh, then Cultivate, uh, a three drop ramp spell that essentially we get to search our deck for two basic land cards, put one in our hand, put one in the battlefield tapped, 
shuffle our library. It's an overall decent ramp spell. Our deck is running a decent amount of basic land, so we'll definitely be able to draw and fetch whatever we need. We got some extinction events, just some more board wipes. Definitely in the best of one, there's a lot of aggressive decks, so having a good board wipe for four mana that especially exiles and not destroys target creatures is always fairly good. Um, and we choose even or odd, so in zero is even. So definitely very, very good card there. And we got Lily on your Waker of the Dead. Uh, decent Planeswalker at the four drop slot. Uh, that can, we can plus one. We can make each player discard a card, include ourselves. Each player who can't loses three life, so we can start, you know, if our opponent's very, like, all in, uh, we can definitely penalize them for, you know, playing a lot of cards from their deck uh, or their hand. We can minus three. Target creature gets minus X, minus X, where X is the number of cards in our graveyard, so we can destroy a creature depending on how many, how many cards we have in our own graveyard. And if we get to the minus seven, we can get an emblem at the end of our combat on your turn, put a target creature card from graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. It gains haste, so essentially we get to start reoccurring things from the graveyards. Definitely an interesting thing here. I definitely good in the late game, especially when your opponent's kind of drawing dead and they may not play a lot of draw. I think uh, the plus one's always a very, very strong thing there. Then we have Finding the Old Gods. There's a new card from Call Time. It's a saga for four mana. Destroy target, not only permanent for the first chapter. Uh, second chapter is we get to search our library for a forest card, put it onto the battlefield tap, then shuffle our library. And then minus in the third chapter, we don't play the biggest amount of creatures, but uh, third chapter is creatures we control gain death touch until end of turn. It's definitely, you know, if we have some creatures on the battlefield, definitely very awkward for our opponent to block into, given all our creatures death touch. But overall, pretty good solid card here. The first chapter is really the big, big payoff there because it destroys any target not land permanent. So pretty much anything your opponent could have on the board that's not a land, it can destroy it as long as it's not indestructible. We got Solemn for some more ramp because the goal is we want to get to that seven, eight mana slot uh, on the battlefield just because we want be able to play our big expensive things essentially he comes in the battlefield we can search our library for a basic land card put it on the battlefield tap and then shuffle our library and when it dies we can draw a card so definitely very good if we want to block and draw an additional card or it makes a very awkward opponent want to attack into it uh, because they may not want us to draw that card but i think it's overall pretty good card and it's artifact so if our opponent is playing something like an ugin it's not gonna get wiped out by an ugin then we got luca which is an interesting card here in the deck we don't really play a lot of creatures but we do play um some cards that we can always sacrifice to the luka and exile so something like solemn we gets its effect out we can exile and get something like valky on the battlefield definitely very interesting here um we can do things exile target creature we control then reveal cards from the top of our library to reveal a creature card with a higher covered mana cost put that creature on the battlefield and put the rest on the bottom of our library in any random order uh it's definitely interesting i don't know how i really feel about this this is kind of what the list had i don't really know 100 what the big idea is maybe it's the plus one and then get to the minus seven no idea it's it's definitely an interesting card but i mean it's definitely very good with something like Vol vorin's clex which i think is kind of like the key thing for it it's we're gonna hopefully try to get into a vorin clex by doing something like Luka into it which is definitely a very very interesting play it's definitely a very difficult play but definitely a very interesting play if that's if we if it actually pays off um but vorin clex is a card that we added to the deck as trample and haze for six mana it's a six six if you would put one or more counters on a permanent or player, put twice that many counters on that permanent or player instead. If an opponent would put one or more counters on a permanent or player, they cut that in half and of that many counters on that permanent or player. So essentially this shuts down a lot of your planeswalkers if they don't have a plus two. Um, it shuts down, you know, sagas if your opponent plays sagas. And it shuts down anything that's going to give something like a plus one, plus one counter, unless it gives multiple plus one, plus one counters. So it's definitely a very interesting card. It has trample and haste, so it comes out immediately. You can trample into your opponent for six damage. And if your opponent's playing a deck that plays a lot of counters, this kind of shuts them down or slows them down from what they're really trying to do. Uh, then we got Blood in the Snow, which is another removal uh, card. The reason why I play this is kind of the basis that we can for six mana we can destroy all creatures and we can destroy all planeswalkers i think it's the kind of cool because it has the two abilities but then we get the other ability here is we get to return target creature or planeswalker card where the converted may cost x or less from our graveyard to the battlefield where x is the amount of snow to cast a spell and we do play a decent amount of snow lands uh in the deck so we can definitely get something kind of expensive back from our graveyard onto the battlefield um when it comes to creatures or um planeswalkers so if one of our planeswalkers die in the early game we can always get it back in the later game with blood in the snow uh it's, i think it's just kind of one of those cool things just depending on what our opponent's doing this can kind of be utilized in two different ways and um, worst case scenario we can always just tap six choose one of these even our opponent's not has one of these on the battlefield and just get something back from the graveyard uh creature or planeswalker so definitely a very interesting way to kind of get, just get something back uh very expensive but worst case scenario we can do that as well then we got ugin the spirit dragon of course in the deck just to ramp this to kind of top off the deck uh, once you kind of drop an Ugin on your opponent, if your opponent doesn't really have anything to deal with it, uh, Ugin kind of shut down the game because of his plus two. He can deal three damage to any target. 
you minus X wipe out their board, especially if they're playing like a mono color deck or multiple colors of, you know, very low cost and things. The minus X is very devastating. And then if we get to the minus 10, uh, we can draw, we can gain seven life, draw seven cards and put up seven permanent cards from our hand onto the battlefield, which essentially you, just makes your opponent, oh my God, I don't know what to do here, but definitely a very good card uh, just to round out the deck. And then we'll go over the mana base real quick before we dive into some games. We got one castle Lockthwain here just for some additional draw, especially in the later game. We don't really have too much in the way of draw other than like Solemn. So having a way to draw a card is definitely fairly good. We got, you know, snow covered swamps, snow covered mountains, uh, three copies of snow covered forest, four pathways of uh, flight steps. Uh, we got, we got, you know, three, four, wait, hold on. Four pathways of the black and green, two of the green and red. And then we got one temple for the scry, one uh, triome, and then one of the other triome, and then some fable passages to kind of filter out the mana depending on where we need it. Overall, this is the deck. Let's dive into some games, kind of see how we do. We're gonna play in the play queue just because I haven't really been playing ranks, so my rank's like all the way down. So I'm gonna maybe grind it out over the next couple weeks, and then eventually we'll get back into playing decks in the actual rank queue. But for now, we're just gonna be playing in the play queue, just kind of see how we do, uh, and see what you know the results come. Now right, we're playing Alien Nation our alienation run the play our hands not great but it is good if we can draw into things so maybe we'll keep it is kind of risky i mean ugin's not the best but i think if we can get to like if we can get additional couple additional lands it can definitely be very good and i think having valky on turn two is going to be good in the sense that we'll be able to kind of look at our opponent and see what they're doing so if we can draw a land in the next like two turns we'll be okay all right there we go um I think we just show them that we just had red to make it seem like we didn't actually have the land of our color, but we're gonna play Valky. We're gonna take a look at what our opponent's doing. So our opponent's playing Golgari. Um They have they don't have the mana to play that. We'll take their fiend artisan. Uh, just because their Fiend Artisan can kind of get whatever they would want. Definitely makes it very awkward for them to want to play into it. But, I mean, I like Golgari as a color. It's definitely a very good color scheme and what it can do. Um, This is very interesting. We don't have anything really in our graveyard, but I think I'm going to... Elspeth doesn't really do anything here. We'll make him into a 2-2. Two -two. Or a 1-1, one -one, I guess. They're definitely very awkward on mana. Let's grab another card. And then see the thing is is now just a creature, so it's not actually that bad. Let's draw the let's get the fifth land. Because that will definitely um definitely help us out there. Uh no attacks. End turn. But I don't want to give them anything that's gonna uh allow them to you know take advantage. Gargaroth, that's fine. What is that five? I could always go ahead and um, bind in it. I think I'm good. Let's do another black. Let's play this. Let's get gargs. Good old gargs. We'll swing in. They don't have a land, so we're good there. Doesn't look like they got a land because they would have slammed it, I feel like. That's fine. Which one you gonna destroy? Resolve. That's fine. They get the card back. Pass. They're gonna swing for three. That's fine. Uh, let's do this because next turn they could actually. Um, let's get a triome. Let's 
Let's do this. Let's do this for three. Auto pay. We're gonna. Oh, it doesn't get a return to turn into battlefield thing. Oops. I mean, I could have taken like their their worm. Could have taken their moth. I'm not really worried at the moment because they haven't done anything too drastic. That's fine. That actually is very good. I can actually exile everything on the battlefield. Let's swing in, see what they do. Um, And then we'll just do this for even. So we exile both. And because this is a three, this doesn't die. So, I mean, they can Elspeth. They can Elspeth this. This is not, this is three. So they can Elspeth that if they want to. That's fine. I mean, you could go ahead and do that. I don't have enough for this, right? I'm only at six. Let's do a Deus. That's six. I'll take this again. Because they're going to play it on this, so... One, two, three. Auto pay. That's perfectly fine. Um, let's extinction event. Uh, this for Steven. Let's just get rid of it. So they can't get their card out. It's fine. You can play all your creatures. That's perfectly fine to me. All right. Let's um destroy the creatures on the battlefield. It was too snow. Let's get a Valky out. We'll get this. We'll just keep on annoying them if they have to play things on this if they really want to play their card. Just got to grind them out, you know? That's fine. Another Gargaroth. That's perfectly fine. How do we want to do this? We have five cards. We can give something minus five. What does two become? Ah, uh, cancel. Let's see what they do here. We're still short on mana, because I really would like to have a particular card here. That's fine. We're not in a predicament just just yet. I mean they're close they're they're close to killing us. We're gonna have to block the Gargaroth. They're gonna draw a card. Interesting. I, I would assume they would want to overwhelm me. No. We're at one. We're gonna kill Liliana. We need two lands, which is not gonna happen. Binding doesn't win in here. We gotta land, but that doesn't help here. All right. We stopped drawing lands, which didn't help, I think, overall there, and they had their tempo. Valkyrie was really the only thing we had to slow them down. 
And Elspeth, I mean, we could have maybe used it. It's probably maybe what I could have done. All right, opponents on the play. Get a game right now. Very interesting hand, but if we can get to turn three, we're on the draw, maybe it's okay. What's our opponent giving us? No vibes really of what they're playing. I think we, it's very risky. But we have two turns to really draw a land and then we cultivate. So that's like the, it's tough. The only problem is if we draw a tap land. I think I'm gonna keep. Like I said, if we can get to a la at least a land on our draws in the next like turn or two, we'll be okay. It'll be kind of terrible though if it's a tap land. Okay. We may be playing some like teamer because that's a teamer land. So we'll have to be kind of patient here, I think, because this could be a slog. Our, our opponent's very meticulous, though, on how they're playing things. So interesting, an interesting way they're playing, I guess. Um, So we have our colors. So I think we just continue. We play the black and just make it just on the impression that we're two colors. The ooze isn't very like scary just yet because it hasn't it can't eat anything because we don't have anything in the graveyard so definitely not bad all right so they're playing four colors it looks like so far maybe they play the tree maybe an elspeth's uh nightmare been like really good in this situation um maybe we play one of these i guess we play four green we'll go cultivate we we'll get a red and another black mana. Put the red on the battlefield tapped. Snow cover land to our hand. Our opponent's just playing a very, very patient game here. Like, we can play solo next turn. I'm not really worried yet again. Because they would have to attack into it. Okay, quest and beast. That's perfectly fine. See, now they're on even, though, so this is actually very good for us. So we can actually just um, play our tap land. We can play Extinction Event for even. Just exile them so they can't eat each other. We could have played Binding, which could have been good, but I don't think Binding's the play there. Slows them down. We're at 12. We're getting close to 7, so we can play something like Valky, which is interesting. Another quest in Beast Wow. Wow, we wow. Okay, that's fair. Good, good. They get a land. All right, because they were playing Triome Tapped. I guess that's why. Um, yeah. So this is where we play Binding. Now it'd really be terrible though if they had, you know, second uh, Quest and Beast. So I think this is where we play something like Valky, and just look at their hand and just prevent them from playing any threats. Okay, they don't have any threats, so that's perfectly fine with us. Something had been said that we could have, um, you know, we could have went ahead and not played Valky and just wait and see. But I'd rather them have to think that they have to do something with Valky. This just puts them in a weird situation. They just had to pay all that mana. We'll get a forest. We'll get the triumph, of course, because why not get something into play that's untapped? Um, here's the thing, I don't want to play into a Blood Chief, so I'd rather them play stuff out. Um, so we'll get another Forest, say go. We'll get a Forest. So what's the... Are they just playing the Blue Land? I have a weird friend playing something like Jorn or something. Now this is where it gets interesting. They can only produce one creature. And here's the thing, I kind of want to play something like a uh, Ugin into that. Ooh, that's actually very big. I don't have enough mana though for it. And I want to do this. And do this for, what is that, five?
All right, now they're now they have to stop Ugin, or they're gonna slowly die from Ugin. They're thinking about it. Okay. They're going right for us, because then they can they can get Ugin afterwards. I guess is their idea. Um, what does it say about Planeswalker abilities? Is that still... Her? We'll swing in. Swing in at them. There's a small chance they could draw something like a Quest and Beast, which would be kind of terrible. They're dead next turn if they don't play... If they play their card in their hand. All right, that's fair. You only have two. Let's just swing in. It doesn't actually... These don't actually give him a... Uh, these won't give him any loyalty. We'll discard we'll discard one of these bad boys they're down to three we will play a good old tibble we'll get three mana exile all cards from all graveyards now they're all ours uh we have three mana can i play this for the kicker we'll do that and we'll end turn Now, the thing is, our opponent can't really get around this. That's fine. You only get two. All right. Good game. Good game, good game. Uh, we're on the play. <sighs> kind of like hate our hand, but I don't because it has cards. But it's very expensive, so I think I'm gonna mulligan. Okay, this is fair. We can get something like rid of like Ugin, but we have other plays, so. Oh. Okay. Opponent goes first. We have a decently promised in hand because we can fix our mana. Uh, we don't really have anything for really removal other than that, but we can draw into all our stuff, so I think I'll keep. Hopefully they're not playing super aggressive. All right, Fable passes turn one. I think that's an okay play. We'll play Triome. It's a good play for us. What color are they playing? Something with white. Okay, another Cultivate. Interesting. Is it mono white? Is it two color? Okay. Orzov. So far, Orzov got another white mana. All right. All right, let's see what we're doing here. This is going to be a toughie. I think we just ramp. Our opponent hasn't shown us anything that they're going to get in our way of our ramping, so I think we'd have to. Oh, okay. 
Is this something like a Doom Foretold now with Snowlands? Search for glory. All right, we're gonna gain three life. We're gonna search our card for a legendary card or a saga card. Reveal and put our hand shuffle our library. You gain one life for each snow spent. There's no green, so they can't get something like Jorn. So what is the card they get in this deck? Okay, so a saga. So we'll cultivate. I mean, we're not really under any pressure. We'll get a stat and we'll get one on a dodge and we'll put the red men out on the battlefield and say go. All right, we got Ugin. So, I mean, there's that. Um, Let's do this. Let's Solemn. We'll take the action. We'll get another red mana. The green man on the battlefield will call it a day. Now the question is, they really want to burn their card just for an Ugin. Or, or the Ugin, I mean Solom. Raven's Wings. Ooh. Some birds. So I'm going to guess this is one of those decks that may foretell, is my best guess. Seven. Um. What is the second bit? Whenever you, one or more creatures you control will find you a combat with a player. Look at that player's hand and draw a card. I like that. I don't really like the idea of you looking at my hand. I like to keep my strategy hidden. They have a negate. The other thing, too, is I'm going to hopefully try to play out their bind in here. Let's get rid of you. I don't really like that. Um, And then we'll cultivate. If they like, if they let us. We'll get the last two lands. Uh, it doesn't really matter, I don't think, in this situation. We'll say go. Our opponent has something. No blocks. I mean, they can just block with their four, their zero four walls. So I'm not concerned. We don't have any. This second second chapter is not going to do anything. So I have a weird feeling to play the board wipe though. That allows them to get back like a creature or something. All right, that's fine. Another planes. So they play green for the binding. Is my question. I mean, there's green here. I'm going to assume it's for the binding splash. Because they haven't shown me anything that would actually uh, suggest otherwise. Oh, we do. We have the a non basic. All right, so they have mana open. One, two, we have four. That would leave me with six mana open. What does six mana do? Can I, can I sneak out? Let's see if we can sneak out this. They have a stick. Something's sticking. What do they have in their hand? Is the real question. Is something like they have a draw? They have something priority. Unless they have me priority stack right now. All right, let's let's YOLO. Let's go with a good old Tibalt. Let's force it out of their hand. Worst case scenario, we exile a couple cards here. We can uh, we can you know get a couple of their cards to play against them, which is I think good. All right, another bind in, which isn't bad. And I can destroy whatever they play, so that's good. I'm just really curious what their card is. I think this is where I force a binding out of them, though. It's my best guess. Yeah, they don't want the bolt. I'm going to assume I'm playing control.
They don't have double blue open, so this leaves us open to play um, other stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm pretty good on all my mana, so we'll just play that for green. I think we just Ugin. Make them have it. Let's get rid of all their permanents. They, didn't, they can't ramp. They can't... You know. They can't do X, Y, and Z. Their bird's gone. All right, so we're going to exile their bind in. Got it. All right, so it's still going to destroy Ugin, but then it's going to destroy... It's going to still get destroyed. That's fine. All right, so there goes that strategy. All right, swing in for two. Has death touch. Binding gives death touch. All right, so we have a well, we have a big host of cards here that we can easily draw. So I guess this is like flicker, some sort of flicker. Oh, we got our first foretell card. Can't cast it immediately, so you have to wait. We'll play a land. We'll swing in. We will play creature. I don't have any lands left, so we'll take action, shuffle up my library, but we'll decline. And we'll say go. So what do you got, dude? What do you got? I mean, this is going to be a grind down. I feel like just based on the deck they're playing. All right, we got another Ugin. We're just going to play the Fable Passage. We're going to keep on passing. Doesn't look like they got anything really going on here. I mean, I could play an Ugin, but I don't really want to play it into anything. So we'll, we'll just kind of sit back and let them make the first move. I mean, we have plays. That's the thing. We do have plays. And I feel like if our opponent has like the thing that makes them do like an extra turn or something, it's not very good here. They can do two damage to us, but what does that really do? Except it gives them an extra turn to maybe draw into something. They're really on the think tank though. I'm guessing they're thinking like the other thing too, it's solemns are very awkward. Sweet. Yes, take action. I'll take that action. I will draw all the cards. So I could play a very expensive, like let's get a creature back from the gear type thing. Search for glory. Okay, what are we searching for? What is the card you search for in this situation? What is going to get you over the top? A bind in. Uh, I'm going to play, I'm going to play Tibalt. Even against bind in, I can get it back with the snow thing. I'm going to just start taking their stuff. And just get things out of the way. I'll play you to land. I just want to dig a little bit deeper. That's the goal here. I, I, I just don't understand, like, is that the win condition? Like, do you play anything that's going to kill me? The bird is okay, I guess. I'm going to play Ugin again. And I guess I just start pinging in the face until you show me otherwise that you can um, do stuff. And I'll just get rid of your own binding. And I'll play your own pathway. Or that's my pathway. I don't really know whose land that is. All 
All right, they're going to bind in up my Ugin again. They've drawn, I think, what is that? That makes one, two. I think that's their binding, so that's fine. That's three bindings. Cultivate. I don't have, uh, do I have a non-basic forest? I do not. I mean, I have stuff. Like, that's the thing. I have stuff in my deck. Well, let's do a, a Deus. Um, we'll just try all creatures. What is that? One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's we'll spend six snow. What do we get for six? I don't really even know what I get for six snow. Let's take a look at your hand. They have yet to do anything that makes me intrigued on what they're doing. Regardless, I still get to look at your hand. Okay, so you bounce it back to my hand, but I still get to see your hand. The effect's still on this deck. All right, so we have Flicker Fate, we have Olivar, and we have that. Okay, so we're going to take their only creature in their hand, I guess. And it has your card. Uh, How much does it cost? Four? Auto pay. Okay, our opponent's going first. This is, I think, our best hand we've drawn so far. I mean, sure, we've drawn Ugin, but I think we have good plays early, and we can play this first turn. So we definitely have stuff to tackle their early game, like, annoying creatures. Our opponent's not giving us any ins on what they're playing, but they have Elspeth hands. Elspeth, I mean, uh, sleeves. Oh, almost click Mulligan. All right, Jund. Of some sort but they are playing it looks like they're playing it on a little bit of a budget unless they like the life gain but they did play the life gain tap land okay i don't i don't really know some sort of weird foretell is all i got all right do we bait out what they're playing i think so let's take a look let's take a look what's in your hand do 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 Um, let's take this. Let's make them want to target Valky and bounce it back to my hand. All right, so they don't actually care. Interesting. At least they don't care to my face. So if they're taking the turn off, do we just go ahead and ramp? Or do we swing in for four? I think we ramp. Uh, we'll play the red, because we need that out. They play Field of Ruin, so I guess they are going to try to get rid of maybe some of our non-basics. It does make their mana very awkward. They don't have double blue. They have Solid coming, so they have a counter spell. All right, they're going to put their counter spell to the side. Awesome. Now, do you think they wasted on something like a Solemn? I don't know. 
I move my Elspeth there. Okay. Um, we're on the play. This is yet again a very terrible hand because our mana does not work for what we're doing. So we'll mulligan and we'll keep. This is actually a good hand. It's actually kind of tough what I get rid of here. Maybe we get something rid of like binding because we already have cultivate. But it's another removal. I think we get rid of Solemn and keep the removal as weird as that sounds. And then we have open removal into a ramp and then into a binding. All right, something red. All right. I really just want to play vor boring clicks. What colors is that? Black and green. So I guess I play this for red, just so we have our red out. Oh, we'll get rid of that. I don't need a landfall into some crazy things when we ramp up next turn, so that's fine. Um, We'll play another green. We will then go get a black and a green. We'll then put the green on the battlefield. We'll get a black man on the battlefields. And then depending on what they do, we can always play bind in this turn. They own okay, so they're playing like some larger rule, like rule mid-range, I think. It's not like they're playing another color or they would have searched for it. Check the turn off, so I'm not really tempted to do anything. So we're just gonna keep on ramping ourselves. Why not? We'll get another black mana. Put the black man on the battlefields. Keep the red in our hand. Just keep say go. About seven. We have seven mana. We need one more. Wolf Little Heaven. Okay. They're playing some fancy lands. Awesome. There we go. Um, we'll play the red mana so they know that. We will then play binding shoot that because they can pump that up part of me wants to play like warring warring clex and then play ugin but i think i may just have to get ugin out just to kind of slow him down no i need that well i guess i'll get a forest to replace it I'm not as sad about it anymore. And we'll play Voran Clicks, which slows that down. No more chapters for you. It's fine. It's perfectly fine. They have a lot of mana. Maybe they're going to play Ugin. Maybe that's their play. Well, I guess we do this. Get this and this. Play this one out. Play this one from our hand. We'll swing in 4 6. What's their last one? Choose any. Target opponent, they control fewer lands than you, create a 4-4 four, four green warrior. Oh, that's cool. And what's the second one? Put target land card from your graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. Nice.
migration path. Nice. I think it's going to be a little late, unfortunately. Good old book, the good book. Nice. Um, let's just crawl another red. I don't know if I have enough. Oh, but not you. Let's do Ugin. So he enters with 14, I think. It just doubles. I kind of wanted to see it play out. And we are back. I mean, with that being said, I think the deck overall performed fairly well. The one card I feel like doesn't really work at all, I don't really know. I have Also, I didn't really draw him. He's only a two of in the deck. Is actually Luka. Um, I don't really know if you really need to run Luka at all in this deck. So other than that, I don't really know if we need to run the red at all. It just becomes technically Golgari. Maybe he could take one of the cards from the sideboard. Maybe throw in something like Clothis instead of Luka if you feel like that's an issue. This kind of helps you, you know, gain two damage, gain two life, or create some additional mana. Crush the Weak is a, a decent card for some low, you know, board wipes. There's some other things that are definitely interesting in the sideboard that you can always add in if you feel like you want extra copies of Blood, in the, Blood on the Snow. Other than that, I mean, the deck is fairly fun. Um... I don't know where it ranks, especially in the rank queue. We didn't really play anything that I seen that was technically meta in any way. I did play against a couple control decks. That's why I feel like I didn't play many games, but the video has kind of drawn out on kind of long. But guys, if you like the video, hit that like button. It definitely helps out a lot. If you're new here, want to post new videos on the channel, hit that subscribe button. But I'll catch you in the next video.